All right, so yesterday I told you how excited I was about doing this video on mentorship. Um, I feel like mentorship is something that is majorly underrated and also I think people uh, do it wrong, to be honest. Um, so this video is the value of a mentor. It's not exactly how to do it, but one thing I'd like to say is while I tend to refer to people as my mentors that I see online, I really think mentorship has to be about accountability, which means it has to be an actual human, whether it's somebody that you hire, who is a professional coach in a field you're trying to improve in, or whether it's somebody that you get to know in your field that you're either in or going into. Um, I think the value of having a mentor who not only teaches you things, but also holds you accountable is absolutely critical in pretty much every area. So number one, the value of a mentor. Um, this is where I think having a mentor who is much further along in that field is so important because while innovation might change like with software or processes or learning, um, learning about how things used to be done can give you an advantage in innovation because there are certain things that um, we've learned how to do. Like, let me give a quick example. Um, when I took my standardized test, the ACT and SAT to get into college, we were not allowed to use calculators. Therefore, the math was not as high, but we had to do it by hand. And there were other things that we had to learn how to do. Because of that, I learned how to think about numbers, manipulate numbers, and work through the process really fast in a way that my kids didn't because they went everything straight to their calculator. The disadvantage for them was they often didn't see where they made a mistake because they punched it all straight into their calculator, whereas I had to write it out longhand because I had to do the math, and they felt like they would lose time by writing things down. Now, did you hear what I said? Because I had to write things down the old-fashioned way, as opposed to type it straight into a calculator, I was able to catch my mistakes. I use calculators when I was teaching standard. I used to teach uh, ACT and SAT prep. I would always say you use calculators for computation. So write out the problem, get everything adjusted, moved, blah, 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 and then compute using your calculator to do that quickly so that you can find the right answer. Um, so that's one example that maybe you can relate to but by hearing how somebody used to like my neighbor is in his 80s and he's been a farmer his whole life and so was his dad before him his son's a farmer um learning how they did things in farming when he was a kid so 60 and 70 years ago can teach me how to do better farming in my backyard garden. Yes, we might have different kinds of uh, fertilizers we can use and different things we can do and raise boxes versus whatever. But hearing how they could get in tune with the weather can give me an advantage over other people who only know how to do it the modern way. And that's kind of what I'm saying. Learning how people used to do it, and it's been forgotten, it's forgotten wisdom, can give you an advantage over people who have only learned the way we're doing it now because you may notice something over here and go, oh, you know, we still have this problem and this is how they used to do it. Could I tweak that? Um, my husband uh, was a paramedic for 15 years before he became a nurse. And he said, learning how to be a paramedic before you had all these different kind of things helped him to assess a patient in a way that people don't necessarily do now. He could pick up on things that people aren't trained to look for because the computer catches that for you. Um, whereas he had to be in tune with the patient and it helps him to do his job better. Um, and it also, when we go on the missions field and we're doing uh, medical missions and he doesn't have all those fancy things, he can go straight back to his original training and solve those problems, whereas other people don't. I remember when he was in school, he went on a medical missions trip um, in February of 19 and he had they were trying to set something up and because when he was a paramedic they had used these tackle boxes and used them to go in and out he was able to create this little thing that made it easier for everybody well it's because he was a paramedic back before they had all these fancy gadgets and so he had to carry all this stuff 
that he knew an innovative way of doing something in a modern time. So that can give you an advantage. And that's one of the benefits of having a mentor or multiple mentors who have been in the industry at different stages. Number two, relationships and connections expose you to more wisdom. So um, you see this appearing in YouTube with videos you may like. Um, but this is true for mentors too. So just like when you get to the end of this video, it will give you uh, what YouTube has determined is the most likely video for you, something that you would be most interested in or you would benefit from if you liked this video. Your mentor, after spending time with you, is like, you know what, you talk an awful lot about fishing. So let me tell you about X with fishing. And, you know, that that's an example. It could be anything. It could be a particular area. My husband with a background in EMS is much better at recognizing issues in trauma than somebody who's never been outside of the hospital setting. And um, that's just one. I use him because he's easy. I've been with him for basically my whole life. Uh, in fact, a couple days ago, I realized it was 28 years ago that we became an official couple. It's like, how is that even possible? Um, but so with him, again, he has had certain experiences and interests. Same thing with you. When you have a mentor, they start to identify areas that maybe you don't know about. My husband found out about his current career. He had never even heard about it. He was a paramedic working in an ER and a couple of nurses were discussing it. And he's like, wow, that sounds like a really neat job. You know, what What do they do? Tell me more about it. He looked it up. He was like, that sounds like my dream job. And he loves it. So it took us a long time to get there. It took us 12 years to get from paramedic to where he is. But we got there. And the same thing with your mentor. They can open doors to things you didn't know about. And that, again, having multiple mentors who are in different areas and different phases. That's a value that you can't even put a price tag on. Number three, um, you want to seek mentors in complementary industries because their outsider's opinion may help you to see things that others don't. So for example, writers, we work with editors to help us to um, make our writing better. Now, if you are a textbook writer, like writing textbooks, or you are a reporter, there are things that fiction authors do that can help engage the reader more. And so you may want to spend time with people who write in fiction, not because you're trying to lie or do whatever, but because you're trying to make your, your writing more appealing to a reader or you're, because you're focused on the facts, you may miss the human element and they can help you to pull in that human element and create more of a story rather than a term paper, unless you're writing a textbook, in which case you probably want to write a story. Or you don't want to write a story. Um, but if you are a realtor, having mentors who work in a title office could be useful because they could help you to understand a side of the industry that you don't interact with all the time. You may have gotten some of it in your training, but you don't interact with it all the time. If you're in, say, retail, working with somebody who is in another field that complements retail, maybe transportation, will help you to see things that other people who are only in their little bubble don't recognize. Uh, number four, learn how to be a mentor. I think this is really important. Um, we sometimes assume that somebody, because they've done something a long time, that they can teach somebody. But teaching is a unique skill. And so is mentorship. Mentorship is not just about uh, sitting up and talking to somebody and telling them what to do. It's about developing that relationship, learning and listening and growing with a person and helping them to become a better version of themselves, not a copy of who you are. So the value of a mentor is really about um, helping you to see things you didn't see, helping you grow within your industry and innovate, which gives you an advantage. Um, and it's also about learning how to help the people behind you. You may not be a natural mentor and it may not be something you want to pursue, but learning how to mentor other people so at least you have that skill to answer questions reasonably or point somebody being able to identify who is a good mentor because you know that you're not and you know what one is. And you can say, you know what, I'm not a very good mentor, but this person is. I've seen them do X and you can point people to a mentor for themselves is all very useful. So. I hope you've gotten something out of this. I really in, 
enjoy and value mentors, even though I'm not somebody who naturally has a lot of friends. For those of you who know me in person, know that I'm a bit of a loner. Um, but I do understand the value of a mentor, and I have had a number of mentors throughout my life, and I am currently um, finding mentors in the new industries that I'm moving into so that I can learn. I'm practicing what I preach, and this is an important skill that for the last year and a half, um, I forgot to value. And so I encourage you not to make my mistake. Remember, yesterday I was talking about learning from mistakes. This is a mistake I made, and I hope that you won't make it. I am going to see you on the next video where we are going to talk about taking care of what you have and uh, how it will help you get more. I'll see you then.